Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to create an algorithmic trading strategy that you can hook up with Robinhood. So in order to get this to work, we're gonna need two scripts. The first script is the one on your screen, which is called the main script. We will be interacting with this script the most. The second script will keep all of our functions for the algo. So just make sure these two files are in your working directory in order to get this to work. So the first thing I'll do is source the file with all the functions. So the trading strategy is just a momentum strategy and I have a video on backtesting a momentum strategy on my channel. So I'll be applying that strategy to this algorithm. It'll just be intraday. And if you haven't watched it, it's basically grouping some tickers and then evaluating which ticker or which stock has the highest momentum at each bar. And then the one with the highest momentum, we will go long until the strategy gives a new signal for a new stock. So I'll go through an example, but the first thing we need to do is sign into our Robinhood account. I will get historical data from Robinhood for the tickers I request. So in this trading strategy, I think there's about 10 tickers. I just picked these at random, but here you'll see the bars. So in the strategy, it will evaluate at each bar what stock has the highest momentum, and then we will place orders on the stock with the highest momentum. So here I'm just assigning the bar size I want to trade. So I'll go ahead and use 15 minutes. I'll set a new environment to store the new quotes. This function is to get the times we want to trade. So I'll go ahead and run it and then we'll view it. So depending on what the bar size is, mine will start 15 minutes after the market opens and then it'll sleep until the next bar until the market closes. But the second to last timestamp was modified so that I make a decision right before the close. So five seconds before the close and then the algo or the program will stop a minute after the market closes. You can skip this line, but if you run it, it won't affect it if it is after market hours. I left it there because in order for this algorithm to start, you will need to run these two lines. But if the algo breaks for some reason, you can always go ahead and run this and this will eliminate the timestamps given here that have already passed so that you always trade the very next bar. So inside this scan block, I have system time located here and towards the end. I put that there so I can calculate the time it takes the algorithm to run, which will get output in the following lines. But here I'm just sourcing all the functions and then this block will get the newest quote for all the tickers and we'll store it in the environment called E, which we created here. So again, this block just gets new data and row binds it to our price series so that we can use the latest quotes to calculate the momentum, which is done here. So this will calculate the momentum for each of the stocks and we'll pick the one with the highest momentum at that very last bar. Next, it will send the orders and I have three parameters. So I'm passing in the best ticker or stock. My maximum allocation for that stock is only $100 and a slippage parameter of no more than five cents. So whatever the quote is, I'm gonna add five cents and that's the most I will pay for this particular stock. So that will send the orders to Robinhood. And then the very next line is I'm going to close any positions so the strategy is only long one stock at a time so that if we get repeating signals, it won't close out the stock and then buy it back again. But just know that this function will close out the positions and send orders if applicable to Robinhood. And then I have an output wrapper, which will just take the out and the in variables to calculate the time it took to make a decision. And it will also print out the stock with the highest momentum and its price. And then finally, it will just sleep until the very next bar. So I'll go through an example. So again, by running sleep and assigning it one, I'll put this system to sleep until the very first bar and it'll start looping until the market closes. So here I'll just set XX is equal to two. And then I'll go through one iteration so that you know what's going on. So here I'll just run this line. I'm gonna source my functions. And if we take a look at our historical prices, we see that this ends 12, 18, 20, 20, 12, 45. So this was the very last bar. But once we run this block, it will add the current quote to that price series. So if we take a look, we go to the very last bar. We now see a new row with the latest quote. And I'm running this after market hours, so that's why you see that this quote is off. 12.19 is actually a Saturday. But after we get the latest quote, it will calculate the momentum using this line. So if we run this line, we take a look at two open. So we have two columns at each row. The sequence is actually the column number for the stock with the highest momentum. And the second column is just keeping track of the strategy returns. So if we take a look at the very last line, 
we see that we have our new timestamp. So for this new bar, it's saying we need to open up a new position on stock number five in our price series. So if we go to our price series, the fifth stock would be Goldman Sachs. So on the returns column, these returns are actually for the previous bar, which makes sense because at this current bar, we would have closed this position. So just keep that in mind. So after it calculates the momentum, we can now place orders. So if we go to our script, we can now send the orders. So we're just passing in the variable to open. It's gonna locate the stock we need to open. Here I have other parameters. The max allocation for the stock is only $100. And the max slippage I'm going to accept is five cents above the quote I got at that very bar because prices might fluctuate by the time it reaches this line and sends the order. So I'll go ahead and run this line and then go to Robinhood and wait for the order to hit. So here we have a pending order. And if we open that up, we see that it's for Goldman Sachs and the quantity is in fractional shares, but I don't want to buy Goldman Sachs right now. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And then we'll go to the very next line. So the next line will close out positions if need be. Sometimes you'll see that we get a series of the same ticker. So I have written up several conditions in this wrapper that if, if the previous bar has the same stock, we won't close out positions. This will also prevent the algorithm to close out any other positions that you have in your portfolio. All right, so this is just gonna output the time it took the algorithm to run in seconds and also the stock with highest momentum and its price. So that if we run this line and I'll move this up, we'll see the time in seconds and the highest momentum stock was Goldman Sachs at a price of $250 and 10 cents per share. All right, so we'll go to the very next line. So this next line, will just put the system to sleep until the very next bar and it will repeat the process. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. All right, so just to recap, we need to run this block to get historical prices. This can be done before the open. We need to assign what bars we wanna trade, the environment to store the quotes, get the timestamps to trade. This line is optional unless the algo crashes for some reason. And after you run those lines, you can highlight these two lines and just hit run and it'll put the system to sleep until the market opens. So for the entirety of the program, we just spent it in this main file. But if we go to our functions file, this has all the required packages we will need. Here I create a new environment where you will need to store your login credentials to log into Robinhood, the tickers you want to trade, and all the functions that we will need. So for this wrapper called historical data, I'm just grabbing the historical data from Robinhood and then converting it into the bar size we want. Just keep in mind that the highest frequency currently available is only five minutes. So that's what this function is for. The next function is to get the quotes from Robinhood. And the thing to note here is that I am currently using the midpoint quote to get competitive pricing, but you can always alter it if you need to by changing this line here. So the next function is to actually calculate the momentum and I'm using a period of four so over four bars, I'm seeking which stock has the highest momentum by looking at each row, so each timestamp. If you want to change the number of look back bars, you can always change it by changing this four here to the desired look back period that you need. But I cover this in detail in my momentum video if you want to know more on how to backtest this strategy in particular. All right, so these functions. I covered in the Robinhood API video. This is essentially the same thing as place order, but I had to alter it if I wanted to place orders in fractional shares. So that's why I'm requiring these additional functions here. Send orders and close position are essentially similar. So I'm looking and comparing my positions in my portfolio along with the previous bar to see if we actually need to open or close positions. So you'll see a bunch of conditions here. So if it turns out that the stock is actually in my portfolio already, you'll see a message that says nothing to open since we already have it. Otherwise, we need to send an order to Robinhood and that's what this block is doing. So I'm assigning a stock price, what security, the number of shares. This strategy is a buy only strategy, so I'm always long only. So the stock price is actually the midpoint quote plus the max slippage we assigned. We round it to two decimal places and then here I'm just placing the order and then I'm logging out. So to close out the positions is similar to sending orders. You'll see a bunch of conditions in order to see if we actually need to close a stock or not. So this day to day function will calculate the time difference between your location and New York time. It will then see if it's 
after the market closed, but before midnight. If that condition is met, then the next trading day would be tomorrow. Otherwise, the trading day is the current date indicated by system date. And we will need this function to, to get the timestamps we need. Our sleep function calculates the time we need to set the system to sleep in hours, minutes, and seconds so that we always put the system to sleep for the proper amount of time, whether that's hours, minutes, or seconds. So if we go to the next function, this output function is optional. I'm just calculating the time it took the algo to make a decision, and I'm also printing the stock with the highest momentum and its current price. And then the last function is to get the timestamps we need to trade. So again, I'm just adjusting for time zones. So I'm starting the algorithm at 9.30 when the market opens, and then I'm adjusting for the bar size and the time difference. It will stop at 5 p.m. New York time, and then I will adjust for the time difference. I'll create a sequence of timestamps here. I'm gonna change the second to last bar so that we trade five seconds before the market closes, and then the algo will actually stop a minute after the market closes. All right guys, so those were all the functions that are required to run this program. So with that, I'll end this video. You can always message me if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.